that can be taken in order to make these goals and objectives that embody the vision of the community uh, actually occur in the, uh, in the physical realm of the town. Uh, POCs have changed slightly over the years due to the changes in state statute. Um, we're now, uh, as we're updating the new batch for towns that, uh, that updated in the early part of the 2000s that are now going through the update process, uh, there's uh, requirements from the state to address consistency with uh, uh, growth management principles, principles that the state has adopted uh, through its Office of Policy and Management, um, consistency with the state uh, plan of conservation and development as well as the regional POCD, and uh, new issues such as uh, addressing agriculture and issues of sustainability um, are also things that we have to uh, look at every time we update the POCD uh, for, uh, for the future. The topics are generally covered in the plan, ranging from demographics to housing, natural resources, open space and recreation, uh, as I mentioned earlier, sustainability, uh, community facilities, transportation and circulation, uh, development potential in the town, uh, the economic base, uh, economic development goals and objectives, and town finances, but also, uh, perhaps most importantly, uh, every plan that's done for, for each individual town really needs to include the priorities of the residents as well. Uh, it's not simply a cookie cutter document that you can do the same thing for every community um, and just sort of enshrine that. Uh, in order for the plan to be really effective and to be a, a more powerful document, you really need to have the feedback of the residents of the community and make sure it sort of meets their expectations and the things that they'd like to see happen over the next 10 years, uh, which is why we have sessions such as these and our, um, our other Saturday sessions. So from a combination of, uh, of uh, different meetings that we've had, the, the first part of the charrette, um, and even looking at some of the early results of the town survey, we're finding a number of priorities that, uh, that seem to uh, uh, be very important for the community. Uh, sidewalks and bike paths has come up quite a bit, um, having more shopping, eating, and gathering places. Uh, the importance of recreation facilities in the town um, uh, it's, it's been uh, highlighted a number of times in conversations that we had. Uh, diversifying the housing stock, um, you know, create options for both younger and older households. Uh, Amity and improving that area uh, in, in a number of different ways, both economically and from a, a, a transportation circulation standpoint, has been uh, a very, uh, very important topic that's been uh, that's been brought up on numerous occasions. Uh, Open space, protecting farmland, also a, a high priority. Uh, the traffic, uh, again, the, the real concern being down in the Amity area near the New Haven line. But the roads in general and how folks get around the community. Uh, Beecher Road School has also been uh, a big issue. Also, um, energy uh, issues, and not just looking at renewable sources like solar um, and, and things like that, but also uh, the uh, system that's already in place for things like uh, natural gas lines. So our goals for tonight uh, really boil down to about three of them. Um, it's really trying to understand the town's uh, range of values and priorities, which we have discerned from the, uh, the Saturday charrette uh, session, as well as meetings with uh, the, uh, the Town Plan and Zoning Commission and other commissions that we've met with, uh, and just residents we've talked to um, at these different meetings, uh, really identifying what values and priorities set, set Woodbridge apart and make it unique. Uh, perceptions of the different issues that have come up, uh, how folks feel one way or the other about, uh, about different topics and different concerns, and trying to start fleshing out the ideas for future actions that we can use to put together uh, an action agenda for this plan that reflects the thinking and the, uh, the needs and desires of the town's residents. So here's just a picture from our from our shred on the uh, on the 17. We ended up having over uh, 70 participants uh, either stay for the whole time or come in for part of the session. Uh, it was a six-hour session. Uh, we received about 165 written comments. 
Uh, a lot of comments uh, posted as sticky notes on the maps of the town that we had up on the wall for identifying strengths, uh, weaknesses, and opportunities in the community. Um, when we had, it, had folks break into uh, small groups to discuss uh, a variety of issues that the town is facing, uh, we had some very detailed discussions. Uh, Tim and I were there, as well as two other planners from our office. We sat in on some of the table discussions, and uh, we're very impressed with the level of detail and uh, the, uh, sophistication of the discussion of the different issues that, that were being uh, that were being talked about. And we had a good report back session. Uh, after our two breakout sessions, each after each one, we had folks come back, report on what they had been discussing, what they had uh, settled on, what they had not agreed on. Uh, we got a lot of good information just from, from hearing back about those uh, summaries of those conversations. Uh, just a little a little background information. We had a, uh, a, a speaker, uh, David Fink, of the Partnership for Strong Communities, uh, gave a discussion about the importance of providing a range of uh, housing option, options to households of different ages and how more housing diversity can help uh, younger residents build equity and roots in the community, as well as uh, helping older residents stay in the community when large homes, uh, relatively far removed from community services, become a little less, uh, a little less practical. And this is just a shot of our uh, one of the uh, one of the maps that we have with our with our notes on it. And as I, as I mentioned, uh, we, we supply folks with a lot of background information, most of which is uh, at the tables in the back tonight as well. Um, and I think that, uh, the absorption of that information by, by residents and participants uh, really led to some very good discussions, and we were very happy with the results that uh, we ended up receiving um, as part of those discussions. So a, a number of themes came up uh, when we had folks report back about their the small group discussions. Um, but on the issue of open space, there seemed to be a, a thinking that the acquisition of open space was a little less pressing now than simply managing the system of open space assets that the town has. Um, in terms of housing, um, folks expressed a desire for the possibility of new or smaller housing options for uh, different household uh, age brackets, working families. Uh, this was uh, identified as a high priority. Um, the status of Amity as the gateway to the community and enhancing that that gateway feel when you come off of uh, uh, Route 15 or when you come up uh, come up from 63 or 69 from the split in New Haven uh, was was very strongly stated that this needed to be a, a big a big priority uh, for this this plan update. Uh, new recreational facilities uh, were noted as, as being needed, and uh, there was also a lot of discussion about the center of town, particularly the old firehouse, and what can be done in terms of increasing social and civic activity uh, right in the center of the community. Uh, but in terms of development in the center of town, folks weren't really looking for expansive development. It was very, very small, modest changes, and really centered around the, uh, the old firehouse. So we, we went through all of the, uh, the comments that we received and actually tabulated uh, the top issues that were, were identified. Um, it really came down to uh, housing in general, the Amity area specifically, uh, open space protection, acquisition, programming, maintenance, uh, and then a, a number of uh, items that kind of fall into the heading of active living, uh, whether that be sidewalks or, or bike paths or current uh, town fields and, uh, and other recreational assets. We had a lot of discussion about commercial development as well and how uh, the town could better uh, promote its, uh, its economy and build on some of the economic strengths that we've identified in some of the research that we've done. Um, also, a, a number of comments about the country club of Woodbridge, uh, the property it continues to be uh, something that the town residents are very interested in the future of um, changing or at least looking at zoning and development regulations and how they can be modified uh, to, uh, to sort of change the form of development that takes place. So we, we tabulated all these and uh, came up with this list to sort of give, our, give ourselves a frame of reference of uh, how, how much importance uh, our participants were, were 
providing for each of these uh, each of these different topic areas. <clears throat> So we, we've been keeping track of our SurveyMonkey uh, instrument that's been out now for a while, since mid-April. Uh, as of, I believe this morning, we were up around 1.30? High 1.30s. High, one, high 1.30s. High 1.30s. We, we made this slide a, a little while ago, so we were at 1.25 as of uh, yesterday morning, but uh, we had a number of responses over the last, uh, last day when we checked this afternoon. Uh, so that we felt that gave us enough uh, enough responses to start talking about some of the results that we've seen and some of the implications. One thing we're going to do is uh, keep the uh, survey open until uh, the end of June to give uh, to give everyone a chance to participate who may not have had a chance yet. And uh, at the July 7th TPC meeting, uh, I'll probably be discussing the uh, the final results of the survey at that point once we've had about a week to uh, to collate all. So I'm going to let Tim come up now and uh, kind of walk us through some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, interesting uh, uh, facts that we were able to pull out of the survey results uh, so far. Thank you. Uh, yes, go ahead. Before you get started, talk about the survey. I completed it earlier today and watched the um, excellent. Uh, sort of summary viewing of the May 17th event, and I've changed Great. my opinions already. So, <laughs> <laughs> in less than eight hours. Too late so, for Lisa. You're, you're, you're so are we going to have a second and maybe a third chance? No, my point really is that, you know, obviously, if this goes as well as I think it is going, people are going to change their opinions as they hear others' yeah. um, ideas. And, so uh, my question is, are you going to have more than one survey? Well, we're not. Why would we want to hear about opinions already expressed when you haven't heard of ours? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that kind of shape perhaps the responses you get from this meeting to tell us information that you've culled and distilled and analyzed and opined as to? Why are you doing it that way? Why aren't we just having coming to this brand new room tonight? Well, we got it. we wanted to get people's um, early opinions of, of what they thought about town issues, and then as we went through the plan, if those opinions change, <clears throat> we have sessions like this um, for folks to come and express those opinions, and they carry just as much weight as as a survey response. What we hear from folks at at public meetings, whether it's this past uh, Saturday the 17th, or tonight, or at our future workshop in August, um, those are obviously going to carry as much weight as, as um, you know, the, the opinion survey as well. It's just another tool and we, and we, that we use in, in doing POCDs. And we wanted to get an early start before the workshops just to see where people were, were, um, you know, were sort of leaning opinion-wise on a number of different topics. Right. Um, I guess I'd, just to uh, add on to that, um, how, how we've been viewing the survey as an instrument is just as part of the planning process is that it's something that uh, gives an important avenue for folks to have a say. Um, they might not otherwise be able to come out and have a voice in uh, part, as part of the planning process, perhaps they can't make it to a meeting like this. It also had uh, quite a bit of length and detail. Um, just helps uh, to pull in these opinions on the issues that we might not be thinking about prior to coming to the, uh, the survey of what the issues that might not be top on their mind uh, coming into the meeting like this. So with that, um, first off, just in terms of the representativeness of the survey here, uh, we compared quickly uh, the eight ages that people uh, reported in the survey uh, responses against the town's census demographics. Uh, what we see here is that it largely matches the, uh, the age range of the town. But what we did see was that there are, few, uh, there are fewer responses coming from folks at the youngest and oldest ends of the age spectrum. Um, so we can keep that in mind going forward. The first, uh, one of the first questions we asked in the survey was simply, uh, how are you satisfied with your neighborhood? 
And by and large, people said yes, and these like it. Um, however, of course, people always have uh, issues and uh, concerns about their neighborhood. And uh, about 70% respondents had at least one concern about their neighborhood, ranging from uh, the quality of the roads, traffic congestion, um, being too far from services, from work, or from neighborhood amenities. Um, and then a number of uh, write-in responses that range from lack of town center, um, folks feeling poor sense of community connection, or a lack of safe trails uh, or sidewalks for walking. We asked a couple of questions about Country Club and Woodbridge, since that's been a hot topic as of late. Um, we asked both about the, uh, what people felt was the most important outcome to achieve during that process. Um, and, right, and the most popular choice that was reported was to develop a property with a mix of uses that support the town's economy and meet the needs of its residents. Um, what that translated into in terms of choices about the, uh, the way, way to go forward um, was we made a number of different options here, and uh, the ones that received the greatest degree of approval, but over 50% of respondents agreeing that yes, this might be a good way to go forward. Uh, we're having some sort of golf use, as well as 55 plus housing, or uh, an open space use and 55 plus housing. Uh, whereas at the other end of the spectrum, maintaining um, entirely the same or selling the first or entirely uh, received comparatively less support. Uh, asking about uh, housing and mixed use development. Uh, we had a very, a very strong majority in favor, about 70% uh, saying that they would strongly support or support having mixed use or live work types of development in appropriate areas of the town, which largely mean uh, flats and the area. Yes, and how go many ahead. people respond? Is this the uh, 15 people? This is. Um, the, we received about 130 responses. I, I don't know the exact number as we put this together, but about 120, 130. Are you, break, are you breaking down the responses? <clears throat> For instance, you just said that uh, people favor development in the flats. Are the people saying that? The people in the flats? So we uh, my, my, my question is, did, was that correlated where the comments are coming from? Since we haven't finished the survey yet, we're still taking responses. We haven't gone into that level of detail in our analysis. That's definitely something we'll look at as we go forward when we have the full samples. So we can yes, start to look at how uh, different different groups of are might be responding to different questions. Because it, it is already a residential neighborhood, you know, and people uh, it, it's sort of wrong for people to want to impose standards on the people who actually live there without having their interests formed. Well, we'll have an opportunity to uh, discuss the ambient region and housing issues as well a little further on. I just, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, if, when folks make comments, I've just been told if you could come up and use the microphone, we can, we can move the microphone forward a little bit if it's easier for folks, just so we can get, because we're on TV, so we just need to pick everybody's voice up so we can hear what's going on. Uh, so we also asked about what sort of uh, economic development or businesses, uh, business development folks would like to see in Woodbridge. Um, we asked what kind of business uh, some would be most likely to patronize or uh, most likely to see pop up. Uh, farmers market was a very popular choice here, uh, as well as a sit-down restaurant. Uh, some other choices that received a fair amount of support were an inn or a bed and breakfast, uh, having some sort of grocery store option. Uh, beyond what's already here, uh, as well as clothing stores. Uh, finally, we also asked about uh, people's use of the open spaces and recreational spaces uh, in the town already. And we were a bit surprised to find that uh, many respondents weren't reporting using uh, many of the town's natural amenities uh, very often. In fact, in the case of many of the properties, uh, a large majority of the to having never used them. Uh, found this uh, among the open space properties, perhaps most in uh, Lake Watrous and Eastern Road Park, or uh, Newton Road Park, excuse me. And then looking at a uh, broader list of recreational facilities here, uh, Woodbridge Library, by far away, receives uh, was the most uh, patronized 
uh, town facility of the ones that we uh, listed here, uh, as well as the Beach Road School. Uh, we found that uh, many of the athletic fields and uh, other athletic facilities were comparatively uh, being used by a smaller uh, proportion of our respondents. Finally, we asked about uh, sustainability. As Mike mentioned, uh, sustainability issues are a new part of the plan of conservation development. We wanted to get a sense of what priorities people were bringing to that way uh, as they go forward. Uh, some of the more uh, the, uh, issues that were most important to our respondents uh, included energy conservation, uh, air and water pollution, water conservation, and uh, waste reduction and management. And then we asked what sort of uh, issues people would be most likely to personally either join an organization, support an organization, or try and lead a group to uh, accomplish a change um, in Woodbridge. And here the, uh, the most important or uh, the most supported issues included uh, tax relief or some sort of tax incentive for homeowners to do um, improvement sort of work, uh, pedestrian improvements, um, doing some sort of solar or other uh, sustainable energy sort of sources, um, and uh, waste reduction or some sort of trash reduction. So that might will uh, lead us in sort of a, a number of discussions around some of the strategies and policy proposals. Actually, before we go into that, I just want to uh, I want to ask if anybody has any questions about what we presented so far. If you'd like to, to come up and, uh, and ask, that would be uh, that would be great. Um, before we actually roll into the uh, strategies and policies section again, if, if uh, you can just use the microphone over on the side here, uh, so we can uh, pick you up on camera, uh, that would be great. Sure. 
Uh, yeah, that's correct. For uh, you know, to do a statistical survey, uh, when we have done them in the past as a company, uh, we've used a, a company that does a, a telephone survey, and they do it to a, a level that's uh, statistically uh, valid. Uh, part of with, when you're dealing with a, an internet survey is that um, there is sort of a self-selection element to it. Folks choose to take it. They don't get randomly assigned a survey and told you have to fill this out. Um, so it's not for that reason and, and for the, the probably the, uh, the number of respondents, it's not the same as having a scientific survey done, which costs, uh, it is a quite an expensive undertaking to do. What it does do, though, um, even if it's not something that you could uh, submit in a peer-reviewed journal, uh, you know, for a uh, you know pharmaceutical study, um, it it gives us another avenue to hear from people about what issues are on their mind. Um, and again, as Tim was sort of alluding to, there are folks who sometimes just can't make it to meetings. They have either they, they uh, you know, work down in the city or work at a lot of events that they have to take the kids to, and they just can't make it. And this is sort of something you can you can give your opinion at any point in time. If you want to do the survey at three o'clock in the morning, if that's convenient for you, that's uh, you know you're welcome to do that. It's just turning over, trying to turn over every stone um, in terms of public opinion, uh, which is why we use it. So, yes. Uh, no, not tonight. We're just going to be talking about the issues that we that we were identifying. So we weren't able to come on the seventeenth in the workshop. Uh, that's right. When we did the the six hour uh, session on. The 17th, we had the uh, we had the breakout sessions because of the uh, the amount of time that we were able to block off for the uh, times for most of the day. Yes. Yes. Uh, Roger Sherman, Fairview Road. I live uh, right over by the Country Club in Woodbridge. Um, I attended the uh, golf commission uh, the other night, and the, the club is really picking up on that. They have doubled the membership, and uh, a lot of traffic has been going through there, and uh, they might even turn around and we might get some profit sharing out of the club this year. And uh, we haven't given the golf course enough time to turn around, and it's turning around. Um, the town did a great thing by separating the pool from the course, giving the pool to the rec department, they, that's what they do. Okay? Your report is a little incomplete. Okay? You want to you want to get the golf the um, let me see the clubhouse away for condoms. Develop all that area. And then possibly move a new clubhouse or whatever over to Amity uh, what's that? Amity Road, Johnson Road. Johnson Road. Yes. And uh, we you've never came up with any type of number with that. There's no sewer over there. It could cost a million dollars to develop that. We might not, we not make, not make a dime. Cause traffic congestions, flooding concerns, and um, you make it sound like a very sweet development. But what are we going to do with the rest of the board? We're going to put a parking lot and put port sands. That's an ensured death of the rest of the course. You know, you're incomplete. You know, I don't know if that's good for your business associates or what. Um, you know, that is my concern. All the residents around that around that course, they don't want to see any development up there. There's other places to put uh, over 55. They'll be much better suited for the people. Thank you. <laughs> So when we talk about the, uh, the strategy options that we'll be uh, tossing out tonight, uh, it's important to remember that they are uh, the choices to think about. They are not hard and fast recommendations at this point. Uh, many need to be looked at a little bit further uh, or to have some more public decision making about, about what the priorities are. Uh, yes. I have a question. Yes. I think it come on the 17th. 
I'm wondering if there's been any decision by the state on how to redirect traffic onto 15, especially 15 North, because currently everybody travels along Lucy Street, and it would be uh, so beneficial if they came up with a better plan than that. And I think it would affect the planning of the, the lower part of Woodbridge significantly if Lucy Street was acquired quieter road and the whole neighborhood wasn't as congested as it becomes at every rush hour and it's a nightmare down there. So I just wondered if you had any information about possibilities of changes to the, uh, the parkway system. Well, actually, on uh, May 22nd, so a week, uh, a week ago tonight, um, the state DOT had a meeting right over in the in the cafeteria across the hallway here uh, to go over the options that they had looked at over a, I believe it was a five-year study period, uh, working with a, a number of, I think, three or four different uh, planning and engineering consultants. And uh, they had a number of options. They have a, an entire website devoted to um, the uh, Exit 59 interchange. Um, so the town probably has a lot of that information as well. Um, I went just because it, it, you know, it's one of the most important issues I think facing the town is what's going to be done with the traffic in Amity, um, and that's what I've been hearing from everybody that I talked to in town about these issues. So um, they they had a presentation where they showed that they, they didn't go through all 25 or so options that they initially vetted, uh, but they showed that their short term, mid term, and long term. Um, proposed uh, changes to be made. The midterm and long term being focused on the on the parkway itself, while the short term would be uh, more local street uh, and state road changes, um, both in New Haven and a little bit in Woodbridge. Um, so th that's probably going onto that website. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it right off the, at the tip of my finger. Um, but uh, they've, got, they've got a 206 page study uh, of all the different things that they looked at. Um, but we're definitely going to take that into consideration when we're, uh, when we're uh, updating the plan because it is such an important issue. Thank you. All right, so starting with, uh, with housing. Uh, this is one of the uh, highest priority items that, that have sort of come out of our, our public outreach uh, activities here. And we looked at a, a, a number of things where folks were looking at increasing options for housing for folks, younger folks and older folks, and families just starting out. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we, we talked about in the office was uh, allowing for some, uh, some density to encourage new housing, higher density to encourage new housing, and, and uh, particularly in mixed use developments in, uh, in parts of the, uh, the Avenue Village area. And, Taking a look at the zoning regulations and seeing what uh, what barriers might be in place that are sort of limiting the supply of, uh, of smaller starter homes being being constructed. And starter homes doesn't necessarily mean what uh, I think we've all become accustomed to thinking a starter home is, which is a, a small Cape Cod on a relatively uh, relatively small lot. But there's a number of different permutations that starter homes can take. Um, and we just wanted to, we thought looking at the zoning regulations, taking a good hard look at what's allowed, um, what could be allowed in the future, uh, would be an area to look for potential uh, objectives for, um, for increasing the diversity of housing. Uh, small age restricted cluster housing one of the, is one of the senior options that, uh, that we were considering. Uh, it would you know, be of a size that wouldn't change the complexity of the town, but at the same time would offer options for older residents who wanted to downsize with larger homes uh, to stay in town and stay active in the organizations that they're in, um, stay active in town life and not necessarily have to move away from their friends and, uh, and uh, colleagues to, uh, to find a, a housing unit that, that fits their need. Also, accessory apartments so, or in-law apartments are another option. Um, in fact, that can actually get and if you set it up a certain way, it can actually uh, help with the State Affordable Appeals Act, where you can have these units deed restricted as, a, as affordable, um, and they count as units under uh, the 8-30 G, G statute, which counts, uh, which you have to have 10% of your housing is uh, 
that's dedicated affordable housing to be exempt from uh, the Housing Appeal Center. For sort of mixed income housing, which was an issue that also came up, there's a number of different policy options that, that we've uh, recommended in, uh, in, in both in other places and, and research that we've done of how other communities are handling the issue of fixed income housing. Um, there's potential down payment assistance programs. A lot of towns have gotten into that. Uh, limited, limited equity housing, which is uh, where you have a, a nonprofit organization uh, that, that owns uh, some uh, land with housing on it, and they lease out the housing long term leases to. Um, uh, to to uh, the residents, uh, and then they're able to maintain the affordability of the housing uh, due to uh, a limited increase in uh, the home prices over time, so that they don't uh, houses don't double these houses don't double in value um, from one buyer to the next. Uh, there's also you know potential for, for having some sort of property tax incentives for affordable uh, accessory units in low apartments that are uh, designated as affordable. There's also a number of different funding sources that can be uh, looked at in terms of finding money to help develop more mixed income, uh, more affordable housing. Um, some towns do a payment in lieu of affordable housing units program where you, uh, a developer will pay into a fund if not directly uh, creating affordable units, uh, provides money for um, either a, a, a nonprofit organization or the town to do its own um, or mixed income housing development. And there's a number of federal programs, whether it's home or, or CDBG funds or some of the programs through the USDA uh, that allow for uh, different options in terms of funding the development of, of more, more affordable units and more workforce type housing. So those were some of the, the, the early ideas that we had come up with. I don't know if anybody wants to respond to those or is, is there something we missed? Is there some program that might also be applicable here. Uh, we'll come right up to my yeah, um, I have a question on the housing, just again, in terms of the analysis. Um, one of the things we discussed in our group um, on the May 17th was the need to look very carefully, not only at um, what undeveloped parcels have access to sewer as well as water, but those that might have public water and could have um, an on-site alternative treatment system um, uh, for addressing sewage other than, so sort of like a, a pack, other than a, a package pack system plan. rather than a conventional system. Okay. Um, and I just, I think there's um, substantial concern in the community about this issue of spot zoning um, and that one area within the larger residential area of the town currently was allowed to have more dense or cluster development, whether other owners of property would come in and say, why can't I have it too? Uh, so not only the legal ramifications about that, but what's, where, where, what parts of the land someone would initiate that kind of argument needs to be looked at. And it's not only sewer access, it's also the package systems. Okay, thank you. Question regarding housing. You mentioned in the survey portion this evening about bed and breakfast and inns. And I know going kind of way back in the history of Woodbridge, we did have inns on, the, on what was the highway at the time, the Kennedy Road and Butcher and Brooklyn. But you did mention now about um, either zoning or policy for bed and breakfast or inns. Is that something that will be explored further? And that's, that's definitely something we can, we can look at um, what zones. Um, so some use like that would be would be allowed. We'd probably go back and look at the history too and see where it was that it was allowed initially, um, just to kind of do our homework. Um, but yeah, no, that's something going forward that we can we can look at. I also think it would be helpful to have a bit more information and more of a cost analysis on some of the housing options that have been raised. For instance, we talked a little bit about cluster housing could be a good problem of course. Um, I know they would think on May 17th argued that there isn't that much of an impact on schools because that population is declining, but obviously it could have an impact on everything from police to fire to town hall, public work.
works, to name just a few. Um, so, not only a cost analysis, but something of a pro and con, I think, would better inform people, better inform our opinions, frankly. We all have opinions, but um, we need more information. Thank you. Okay. The other thing I wanted to mention is that it seems to be dropped out of the conversation all the time when we talk about the uh, country club, but we currently have an age restricted designated zone in town that the town, I think, has done a very poor job promoting the current uh, administration because with one developer had chosen not to develop because of the, you know, the recession. It doesn't mean that it can't be developed in the future. And why, what should be explored with town residents is why do we want to create a situation where the town is competing with a zone already designated for developability? That doesn't seem to make very much sense from a uh, planning point of view. talking about or expressing any of the unspoken but very heartfelt emotional and psychological feelings that the residents of this town have about this town. You're talking about in-law apartments, you're talking about tax credits or low-income loans for people. That's terrific, but it sounds to me like you're giving us a canned, generic presentation that you do at other places. We happen to feel that our, like, like every other citizen of the other 168 cities and towns, we feel that our town is special and unique. I don't think you know this town. I don't think you know that this town historically has had a very, very unspoken but heartfelt feeling about privacy, about ordered neighborhoods, about conservation, about a way of life, about a New England style of living, cheek by jowl with a, a pretty major city, about, about education, good public education, Good neighborhoods used to be reasonably frugal, lean, but uh, uh, well-delivered, limited public services. And it was a compact, a social compact that has existed for many, many years. I don't hear you talking about the psychology of this town. And I wonder if you get it. I think people move to Woodbridge because they like the rural, rural setting. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't want to see cluster housing. They like it like it is. You know, they've been here forever. People have been in this town. I've been here over 10 years. I don't live in a mansion. I live in a very small house. And it's just me. I don't have any kids going to the school system. But I voted to go ahead and put the money into the schools because that's good for everybody in the town. And the people just like it the way it is. You know, with big futures for, you know, development. You know, we got 130 people responding to the common residents that we have in a very small room. And when it comes down to you know, putting something on the book, when it comes down to a referendum, then the people come to, come out and vote it down. So, things, you know, we're wasting our time, you know, but this is what we have to do now. But this is what the people want. They like it. Peaceful the way it is. Okay. I think perhaps we're missing some of the point of what this 
survey is about. Number one is been mandated. Number two, as a real estate agent in town, I can tell you that the population has gone down. There's no tax base in the town which is going to um, bounce back on residents. Um, I don't think everybody in town needs a four-bedroom colonial. I think there's room for younger families to move in, for rental properties to become available. And um, I, think, I think that somebody mentioned something about Orange and Bethany. And I can tell you that that's true. Houses in Orange, which are on an acre lot, and are between the Merritt Parkway and I-95, and have all the shopping facilities on Route 1, is a much more popular town than Woodbridge. Psychologically and um, illegally, people might think that, you know, that we're just doing swell here, but I can tell you having an agency and a company for 35 years as a realtor, this town, is a much better buy than you can find in Orange because people are not coming to the town and they're not coming, not coming because of the facilities that are not here. I think we need to grow. I think the town needs to become a community. I think some of the buildings that we have need to be used for people in the town. I mean, I think the country club originally was set up so that that would be one place in the summertime that families could get together at the pool or golf or whatever. Perhaps that hasn't worked out financially, but I mean, I think that was the thinking behind that, that facility. You know, it was to keep it, keep it, you know, within our protection, but also open it to the town. So I think that I think that this survey and this plan is very important for the town. Um, I think that the prices in the town are going down. Um, they're not increasing. Homes are taking a lot longer to sell. Um, a lot of homes in town have not been updated, and that's the choice of the sellers. There's more land around in Bethany and Orange, and perhaps that's why there are more tracts of properties going up. There is no building, there is no spec building in many of these towns because it's just too expensive now. So, you know, I, I understand, you know, that people are here because it's quiet, but maybe it's too quiet. I might be the youngest person in the room here. Um, so, uh, I've lived in town for four years, and uh, I really like it here. Um, the reason my wife and I moved here is we're actually both working in New Haven, so that's very convenient for us. We like the city, we like going in there, and then being, coming back to our quiet neighborhood. So that's that's really great for us. Um, but I think, I know other people who are my age group that, from a housing perspective, you know, People hear about the school system here and that it's great and all that, but um, cost is an issue for them. I mean, in my particular neighborhood, it's a little more affordable, but that's not the case everywhere. So I don't know that cluster housing is what people are looking for. Um, I think what would help is, you know, making the AME area more attractive and having some, not maybe not cluster housing, but something in that area where people aren't necessarily thinking that they even need to go to him. Oh, it would be great if I could hang out in the neighborhood. Um, so, and I have a completely separate question. Uh, so I'm new in this process. I'm not sure how, if all this is just talk or if there's something actionable coming out of this and how that decision will be. Um, the first thing we have is uh, back at the back table, I think it's about a five-page summary of uh, what happened at the first charrette. Uh, we'll have something similar uh, for this charrette as well. So all that will be available online um, on, the, on the website for the plan. Um, in terms of um, if this is actually going to produce anything, it's going to be absolutely critical in terms of the ultimate 
uh, goals and objectives that are put in the action agenda of the plan. Um, like I was mentioning before, we want to make sure that that list of, of basically the to-do list for the town for 10 years uh, reflects the, you know, the predominant opinions in, in the town. Um, because otherwise then it's, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, kind of a meaningless exercise if you don't take that into consideration. So I understand. And uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be uh, critical to, uh, to us putting together this updated plan uh, as we go forward over the summer. I just want to make a couple of comments about kind of what Harry was saying. From my perspective, when we purchased the country club, the Woodbridge Country Club, we purchased that to protect it from intensive development. And our initial plan was to find a way to market that. We were not going to be in the golf course business, we were going to sell that property to somebody else to use as a golf course or some other use. But in, in my opinion, that's the reason why we purchased that property to protect it from intensive development. I lived in town my whole life. I love the fact that we have a lot of open space. We have some opportunities for development in the lower part of Woodbridge, but I've got to tell you, there's not a lot of opportunity. I'm looking at your slides, and your slides appear to me to be for a town that is not Woodbridge. There's not large tracts of land in lower Woodbridge to build these housing developments that you're talking about. There just isn't. There, there's no real open land here to build even single-family houses. It's a very, very small area, which is almost essentially built out, with only a couple of parcels that are left. I think what you can do, which would be useful, is look at the existing parcels, look at the existing buildings, and figure out how you can tweak the zoning. Small changes, not large changes. Small changes to the zoning regulations, like mixed use, where you have retail on the first floor and apartments on the second floor, and that accomplishes your goal of having a more dynamic area with some additional residents, not a large influx of people. We're talking small changes, because from my perspective, I think the town has, has great open space and it could use more. If we could get more, I would say buy more, because we can't make open space. Once it's built on, it's warm. And I think that a lot of people come to the town because of the open space. Um, I think one of the issues with real estate values in our town are taxes. Our taxes are relatively higher than Orange and Bethany. And, and that's a fact. They're relatively higher. So people look at it. I want to have my kids go to a good school system and go to Amity. And they look at the three towns and say, I can get a better value for my dollar in Orange or Bethany, looking at the, the house they can buy and at their taxes. My taxes on a little tiny house are astronomical in Woodbridge. If the house were in Bethany or Orange, they would be low. But this is my hometown, so I'm not going to leave. But as you go through this process, look at this as small changes, not large changes. Okay? Nine years ago, the last town plan of conservation and development was updated. And that hadn't been done for 26 years prior to that. So that needed a major change. And actually, I think they did a great job. But we don't need a major change. We need small tweaks of that town plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make a few more comments. Um, I, I want to give you a little background. I, I've lived in Woodbridge since uh, 1976. I, I came here and started in junior high. And uh, I'm one of the few people, I guess, who stayed in town because I, I was invested in the town. Not only, I own three houses in three different neighborhoods. I own a business in town in the, uh, in the village district. It's, uh, and I want to just like give a little bit of perspective, just over a little bit of length of time that I think is really lacking here. And I've seen the changes. I don't see our leadership sometimes doing the job that they should within the town. And I'll give you an example. We have a New York Times article about Woodbridge. I don't know how many people in the room saw it. And it was a total misrepresentation of Woodbridge. It talked about rows of uh, ranches and split levels. It was like somebody went to one street and they got the, uh, it, was, it was horribly written. It was absolutely incorrect. If anybody who lives in town knows, we have a huge selection of antique houses, a huge selection of contemporary houses and significant architecture, very diverse. We have diversity in size, 
and et cetera, and no one from our town government responded back and, and got the New York Times to retract this horrific article about our town, which did not give us uh, the justice that the town deserves, because it is a town, although the real estate agent was saying about declining prices, she also for forgot to say that prices around Connecticut have declined significantly. Even towns like Weston, Connecticut, and Fairfield County during the recession went down 30% in value. So that's been probably more a point that of the recession rather than just uh, our situation. Also, it's been failed to be pointed out, Woodbridge is a town, not just a solid one type town, it's, it's a town of neighborhoods. Bradley Highlands are small little cottages that were built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s that offer young families a way to come into town. But homes in the Woodbridge Village District are a different price point in smaller lots, and that's where you have some of the most diversity in town, as far as racial, ethnic, etc. And people are moving there. I, my office is down there. I know the people in the neighborhood, and it is getting more and more diverse. The town has gotten more diverse over time in lots of ways. None of this has been talked about. None of this is reflected in what I've heard, that we already have a lot of housing diversity. Maybe it's not promoted properly by our, by our real estate agents. But I, I know I've lived in different neighborhoods in Woodbridge, and I know about the, the uh, diversity in the housing stock we already have. So I would like to say that people have moved here for a lot of the reasons that have already been stated, mainly to have you know, uh, uh, an interesting house in a more rural setting, even though we're a first line suburb to New Haven, which is unusual. And they also move here for education. I see the new families coming into town. And people choose Woodbridge for a different type of lifestyle. It was mentioned about Orange. Orange is very different than Woodbridge. It's a much more cookie cutter kind of town. Woodbridge has much more uh, you know, uh, variability in its housing, and it looks a lot different. It's not the typical cooking-cutter suburb. That's why people like it here. And we want to maintain that and not have huge changes other than I think most people that I talk to in town are unhappy with what has gone on with development in the flats. Could that be much better? Of course it could. We tried to change it when we wrote the zoning regulations and the town plan of conservation development with all the changes that demanded that any time something is renovated it has to be upgraded. And that has already changed the lockdown, but that could be further enhanced. And the other thing, certainly, is that we could do a lot more to promote the area than we do. We don't do a very good job in Woodbridge. I never see Woodbridge represented very much in like New Haven Magazine talking about its restaurants and its businesses. I, I'm not sure where the fallout is and why our town has had a lack of, uh, of, of good representation when it is such a nice place. I, I, I place some of the fault maybe on, on, on the people who are leaving the town now and not promoting it as they should. But um, I, I think that town residents don't want huge changes. I think you've heard that over and over. There's a lot of opposition. The biggest thing you've had from town residents and the most representative has been the two times the town said no to the kind of development that you were just talking about, 55 and older. Yet when I went to the hearing where the public was not even allowed to speak, they gave us the same thing again. And, and that means that people are not listening to the majority of the town residents. And I hope you know our new plan of conservation and development will reflect the majority of what town residents are like. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Chris Lovejoy, and um, I think what I want to say is that what I'm hearing, I think, is very true, that people moved here a while ago, or even recently, for some specific reasons, and it had to do with things like privacy, education, there's a very high level of education here, and it's a very sophisticated town, and, and those are things 
that I like about it. Um, I, there is sort of a little bit of a Yankee mentality. You move in, it picks up the way you like it. 60 years later, you sell it and have the same exact kitchen as 60 years before. <laughs> that's what we do. I, you know, that, you know, I'm a great bitch to punch out. You know what I mean? I guess that's what we do. And that's one of the things we love here as people who live here. That's what we love. I love walking the cornfields and talking to a physicist one day and a whatever. I, I love that about this town. The thing is, what Harry was saying is very true. The people, the younger people that are coming up, um, what their needs are very different than the housing that we have, or what their wants are. Our inventory does not match what people are looking for. It's not because we're not marketing things. We, we, we make a living on real estate, you do. I market things like you would not believe. And if I put something on the market that has an updated kitchen and bath, 12 hours later, 50 people are running in the door with checks in their hand. And if I put a normal, typical house leverage on the market that is not updated, people are saying, okay, with these taxes and with all these updates, I'm getting a better value if I move to some of the other towns. One of the things I love about the town is that we go, we spend our money, I spend my money on my children's education, on our cultural experiences and things like that. That's right, I, and that's my value system, and that's what I love about this town. It's not going to attract someone to buy my house because my children are very cultured and we're moving out. You know, that's not going to do it. You know, so it, there's a mix here is what I'm trying to say. I definitely understand what people are saying. That's why I'm here. For the same reason you're here. And if we want to draw new people, uh, it's very slow going to draw someone who's willing. You know, someone like us. You know, and that's so. How do you preserve a town and a, a personality of the town and still? draw new people in, you know, and that is the thing. I think um, I would love to see a huge um, thing going on, but some simple, small changes like, like people are talking about, um, I think those things can be, you know, we just need to put it to scale, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I also am very, very strongly opinionated about changing our main zoning. Um, I, we were in Milford for several years, and I know developers that own property here in Woodbridge, because they know eventually we're going to make that mistake. <laughs> and as soon as we do, you know, it's a, it's a, pro it's a serious problem. You cannot take one of uh, uh, the main zone and do something in one neighborhood and not expect there to be a million lawsuits to try to get those things happening everywhere in that zone. It's, it, because it's the way it is. Yeah, so it's just, that's a real issue. But there, you know, that doesn't mean there can't be something done, you know. So. Need for doing some branding and creating a, a, a village, a real village identity 
uh, would be very important. There's a number of different ways to do that. Um, and that's something we'd like to explore a little bit uh, further. Coming up, when you do have new development, uh, again, granted there are the, and we noted this in our, our commercial build out, that there is limited potential for, for build out, uh, for building new commercial uh, developments in Amity just because of how tight the development is there now. But as properties turn over, if a building is, is uh, abandoned, the new owner comes in, wants to tear it down, doesn't, wants to do something new, um, really trying to find a way to encourage uh, deeper commercial development that, you, that goes back in a lot more and uh, it doesn't have as much frontage where you have cars sort of between the street and the building to help bring it in a little bit closer to the street and give it a little bit more of a, a, sense, of, uh, a sense of place. Uh, rather than just a, a small building surrounded by, by a parking lot. Adding housing through uh, mixed-use development, again, that was, uh, that's another, as, as another, another gentleman noted, that's a small change that you can do. Um, and, and improving pedestrian access is sort of a universal point that, that folks have been, have been uh, telling us. Expanding the local market presence of businesses in, um, in the villages is, is also critical. Uh, and again, this goes to you know, sort of a marketing approach and finding a way to sort of promote the businesses that are there now, um, which, are, which are very good businesses, but uh, you know, may benefit from, from getting more market penetration in, in the greater New Haven area uh, and getting their reputation out a little bit more. Uh, looking also at sort of this kind of more micro level economic development type stuff, um, promoting entrepreneurship uh, in the town. Uh, trying to find ways to help folks who may have a home business who with a little, a little guidance and a little help might be able to grow their business to a couple of employees and then take up a uh, you know, commercial space down in the village uh, and sort of graduate up from being a home business to being a, a business in, in a commercial part of the town. Um, those were you know, some of the ideas of what, what we do with the village. Again, the village, it, it's a good point. The village is, is largely developed, and it's not the type of area where you can say, well, we'll just zone uh, this 50-acre uh, tract of land for commercial development, we'll just write the zoning rates really well, and we'll get all this development. It's going to be small changes, and I think we recognize that. We did certainly are hearing that tonight. Uh, so I know a lot, of, a lot of the comments we've had so far have sort of bridged a number of topic areas from housing, to the village, and I think that kind of underscores just how important uh, making Amity the best place it can be uh, is to the town. So I think we're reading that loud and clear, uh, you know, for, for going forward with the right plan. But if any specific comments about the village, um, any reaction to this stuff, you know, would be great to hear at this point. I have a comment about your survey. I completed it about a half an hour before I came here, and I, I read all the local papers, I participate, I, first of all, I was born in Wilbur, so I've probably been here longer than any of you have. Um, I am third generation and my son is fourth generation in Woodbridge. I heard about the survey yesterday from an email from, I think it's Conserved Woodbridge, that, or, you know, the, the people who keep bringing out all the issues in town. I don't know why it wasn't publicized more. Maybe we would have gotten better response. When you put all your bars up there for the different choices that people picked in the survey, I don't know if one of those bars represents two people. So if two people want some object in town, why are they on a bar cup, a bar crack? I, I don't understand what your numbers are. You know, they say, you know, there's lies, there's real lies, and then there's statistics. So I don't know, and I've studied statistics. And I still didn't understand some of those graphs in terms of how meaningful are they in terms of what the majority of the people in town want. Maybe only the rabble rousers took the survey. I, 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 I probably won. <laughs> but um, I think we need to, I'm glad you're going to extend it out. I think we need to publicize it more. Um, and I don't know how to do it. I mean, I read the town website. Um, I love the Economic Development Commission's website. I think that could be maybe, I don't know, do you have um, hit, hit numbers on there to see how many people go into those pages? We may have hit. You know, because I like to see how many people are looking at those pages. I developed the website and I've got hit numbers at the bottom of every page that I want to see if people are reading. 
So I, I don't know how to get that information out more to the public. I mean, I'm very, I'm around town all the time, but I missed that survey somehow or other. I don't know how I did, but I did. So I think you need to publicize that more. Yeah, just a quick suggestion. Put a sign up in the, in the library since it's yes. a, that's where most people go. That would help. When they walk in, they can see it and remind them this survey. We did send out, uh, uh, it was a town wide postcard mailing that had um, the survey at the, we, when we were talking about the charrette dates and what the times would be, that there, were, there was a link to it um, at the bottom of that. And uh, we also put in a, uh, a piece in, I believe, the Observer, um, probably end of April, beginning of May. Um, so we did try to publicize it as much as we could and had a link on the town website as well. Um, but yeah, we did, we're definitely open to, to other methods of improving the, the uh, promotion of that. Yes. Hi, my name is Emily Melman, and I apologize for speaking a little bit out of order with Woodbridge Village. But I wanted to just speak um, as somebody that's only been in Woodbridge for a couple of years and moved here exclusively because of the school, which I have many friends that moved here also. And Woodbridge is a very isolating place to move to, particularly if you've moved here from a city or from a small town. And you know, while I know this is a forum to advocate necessarily for sidewalks, which would certainly help that in places where kids could ride their bike safely, Things like the pool that's owned by, this, by the town are a wonderful community resource that I would certainly advocate making affordable for people to come daily, to make people from New Haven welcome, to have others to see other resources we put in there, like a cafe. I've said to other people it would be certainly nice to have a cafe in the old firehouse that you know people could actually walk to from around the cornfields or from the library or from the high school and not feel like the only place um, to go is to get in your car and drive to Westville or to drive to the flats. So I think you know there's a lot of people here saying oh people only live in Woodbridge because they want an isolated uh, rural experience. I really don't think that's true. Um, certainly not um, of the people that I know and obviously there's a diversity of opinion but there's certainly, I think, a, a large need to make, as other people have said, to make Woodbridge feel like a community that is really a welcoming community for people um, of all ages and of all interests. Thank you. I have a comment, or a question, actually. We talk around the uh, pumpkin fields, the land on Raven Road, I would personally find it very helpful if the developer could answer questions. Is he going to build it? Does he want to sell it? I think he needs all new permits that expire. So what's happening is the biggest piece of land over the land in the town in the village area. You. Going on to another another topic, which is a uh, high priority for, for many residents, is uh, is the uh, topic of open space. Uh, we looked at a based upon the feedback that we got a number of different components of open space, um, starting with uh, just the management of what's uh, uh, what's there uh, now in the, in the town's inventory, uh, you know, having continue to have a strong relationship with the town and Kupop and the conservation commission in implementing. Uh, open space plan. Um, for the larger town owned parcels, having sort of a unified management maintenance plan uh, you know, would be uh, a good way to, to look at those properties uh, as sort of a you know, <laughs> unified whole, uh, as well as looking at the smaller pieces of open space that, uh, that are under town control and how we could uh, you know, find ways to uh, link those together uh, in some way. Um, this also one of the things that we picked up on is this need to balance um, the demand for natural open space and just sort of its, its passive uh, extent uh, versus recreational demands. Um, so we're going to be working on the open space and recreation uh, component of the plan in the coming, the next month, over the next month. Um, 
have already had some, some meetings uh, on it, and so recreation is going to be a big, uh, looking at the town's existing rec recreational assets and what might be needed in the future, uh, it's going to be a big component of, uh, of that work as well. In terms of acquisitions, uh, as has been mentioned, the town has quite, a, quite an inventory of open space now. Um, looking at, at potentially going forward incentives for protecting farmland, uh, would, uh, uh, preserving farmland uh, that may be, for example, under the uh, Public Act 490 designation, uh, would be a, a strong step to take. And, and identifying priority open space parcels, uh, ones that uh, are emphasized allowing public access and use, but also serve the purpose of connecting existing parcels in the town's current network, uh, so that you have more of a unified system than simply a collection of small pieces um, scattered about. Uh, another potential tool that's been, been used in some places is uh, uh, doing some sort of uh, land swap if there's a piece of land that's particularly valuable from an open space uh, or recreation or natural resources standpoint and doing a swap uh, with a, a, a piece of land that the town uh, currently owns um, that may not have the same uh, inherent open space or uh, natural resource value. Uh, that's a way to sort of uh, enhance the, uh, the overall open space portfolio. Um, I know there's a lot, a lot of varied opinions on, on the status of open space in the town and we're focusing going forward. Um, so again, if, if folks have questions about or, or concerns about that, um, specific concerns, that would you know, be great to hear from you uh, about that topic. I have a specific question. When you did the build out on a does go to open space, you projected it was close to 250 homes could be built on uh, the regional water authority long land of the Plots Ferry Road, um, yes. which is almost a thousand acres. And I had understood that that was restricted from development. Um, and I would think you could clarify um, what flexibility the regional water authority has to sell it to developers, it's going to be helpful. Um, yes, some of the, the, the regional uh, water authority land is broken into, into three classes, class one being, being restricted, and class two and three uh, having the potential at some point um, to be divested. Um, Tim, I'm not sure if, uh, if you remember the specifics of that particular parcel. Um, which one are you Either side of Sperry Road, um, but it would definitely. Oh, but it would be up in the northern end. Yeah. On either side of Sperry Road, right. which is a connector between Woodbridge and Bethany, and Sperry Road itself is only open a few months a year. Right. So I don't have any uh, specific knowledge of the breakdown between the three land classifications for that parcel. Uh, we do have uh, data. The tricky piece of that analysis there is that although we have information on uh, a parcel-by-parcel -parcel basis about how much land falls into each classification, we're not able to determine uh, how that interacts with some of the other constraints on development. Um, certainly, that's something we can look at in greater detail as we go forward. Right, we sort of looked at it as what if all of it, worst case scenario, could be built on. Um, and what, how many units would that, uh, would that generate? Just to sort of have a, you know, a larger universal number to know what the potential upper limit uh, would be under you know, those circumstances. But that's something yeah, we can we can definitely see if we can pinpoint more accurately um, what's uh, class two and class three. As Tim mentioned, there's some um, technical difficulties with doing that, but we can certainly take a look at that. So moving on to transportation, um, a number of, of folks, particularly at our Saturday session, um, were identifying things such as bike lanes and, and bike paths uh, along uh, high priority uh, transportation routes as being, as being an, important, uh, an important element of the future transportation plan of the town. Connecting uh, Amity within itself, as well as um, possibly linking up nearby neighborhoods with sidewalks was also uh, an important element that folks noted for uh, improving walkability and livability in, these, uh, in this particular area of town. Uh, one uh, uh, potential tool that uh, we've been recently
researching is uh, uh, a technique called the walking school bus, where you'll have uh, folks who actually uh, pick up kids and at school bus stops, traditional school bus stops, and walk with them to the next child's home, who would also take you know, be on the school bus, and gradually gather a group of kids and, and walk them uh, to uh, the educational facility that they're going to. Uh, so that's another sort of out-of-the-box thing that we're taking a look at as well. And I think the biggest, the biggest transportation issue is uh, really no way around it is exactly what's going to happen um, and when it's going to happen at AC 59 on, uh, on Route 15. So continuing that with a dialogue with the DOT um, and the region to uh, you know, figure out ways to make traffic uh, somewhat more manageable and bearable uh, down in that area is going to be a high priority for our transportation planning component of this of this POCD. I'm not sure if if, um, if there are any other um, transportation issues that have been uh, raised. We didn't hear too much about uh, bus service. Um, a couple of uh, intersections that have been kind of identified as problem intersections. There's some work going on uh, to address them now. So other than those issues, uh, we didn't hear too much uh, except for the uh, overwhelming desire to do something now about uh, the 59 and, and, and the ramps down there. So I don't know if, if folks have any sort of transportation issues that we may have missed or didn't pick up in our first session, um, or if everyone's sort of in agreement about, uh, about Route 15. Um, I think Route 15 is terrible because I go that way every day. But uh, that, I don't know if this is anywhere on there in the plan, but that light by people's where there's no left turn, that someone's going to get killed there when it's days. It's just a matter of time. I'm a little relevant. You have to blow the light to get to take a left there. So. Which, which light was this? I didn't hear the last part. So, um, uh, your people, I forgot what road it is. It's the people's is on your left there. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yep. yeah. It's, it's awful. Another one. I don't know what the Karate's florist across the street from Stop and Shop is entirely in New Haven or partly in Woodbridge, even if it's all in New Haven, it will impact us because it's for sale. Just, just one quick question about sure. I mean, a comment about the light on Lucy Street in front of People's Bank. There's a, when you're coming um, along Lucy Street facing the bank, you know, you're across the street from the bank coming from Litchfield to an Amity. Right. You can right turn on red there, okay. which means that anybody on Memphis Street and Landis Street can't get out. If I want to turn out of Landis Street and take a left down towards the pavement, I can't do it because this car is continuously coming up. So take that right turn off red and put a left turn signal or whatever coming from the other direction. I've been after that traffic light for years, talking to different people, and nobody wants to do anything. But that is really a tough light. That's an easy fix, yeah. uh -huh. except that the state don't exist. Yeah. We really miss the boat on Lucy Street. Uh, when you go down by the, the cleaners, the DOT wanted to rebuild a bridge that goes across the river to a line that goes straight across where the billboards were. Okay. But there was a big fight there, so now we still have a double light. Instead of creating, you know, a good situation where you eliminate traffic, you create more. Thank you. When we're thinking about roads, I just want to put in a plug for protecting and so far as possible our local roads that are winding and narrow and not um, wide enough and paved in such a manner as to invite both seven I know that there's some limitations to what we can do here because some of our roads are state highways. But uh, with that exception, I think our roads are beautiful and contribute heavily to our sense of beauty and open space and nature in the region. We really need to spend some time thinking about how we can avoid putting Jersey barriers on. <laughs> oh, I also like to mention just for your interest. Um, we have a small one-room schoolhouse that's not very far away from our Richard Elementary School. It's in fact, what, two blocks? We can't invite the children from the elementary school to come to the schoolhouse on an informal basis because they have to have 
transportation, they have to be driven there buses because there are sidewalks. I mean, I presume that's one of the reasons. So if you want to target a small scale walking school bus pilot program cool thing, I would like to make that for your consideration. Thank you. Question about um, either shuttle buses or uh, rideshare parking. If we could look into what it would take to locate a parking lot that was big enough to be if people wanted to get together either on an informal basis in rideshare or if something like a major employer in New Haven, like Yale University or Yale McGivin Hospital, wanted, because there are a lot of people who work there and live yes. here. And if they wanted to bring a shuttle bus up here, you could cut down on cars going through that area that's so congested and uh, you know, keep some cars off the road in the Haven as well. So maybe it's a joint effort between the Haven and Woodbridge. There might be, I think residents might be able to do something who have flexibility with their hours. Okay. Yeah, Bridge Kruger, Sunbrook Road. The only input I like to say is I don't see why we have to have two ingresses to Route 15 in Woodbridge for a block away. We've got one on Litchfield Turnpike and we've got one on Amity Road. There's no need to have two of them. And it seems like the one that really blocks up everyone is the one on Litchfield because the people are coming off and getting on. Why they have two going solid is beyond me. Okay. Maybe you could talk to them about it. Okay, we're just going to hit two more uh, topics very quickly. Uh, there was some discussion about the, uh, the town center at our last session, and uh, uh, some mentioning of, of how we could make it a little bit more vibrant, have more activities there. Some of those uh, points have been raised here already as well. Uh, we were looking at some uh, potential opportunities uh, for community gatherings. Obviously, this is, the, the buildings here are a very popular uh, central location for, uh, for public meetings and, and things of that nature. But if, there might be ways in which we could get more uh, you know, seasonal park, uh, farmers markets, uh, music and art events. Uh, here uh, that could generate more more activity in the center. Uh, we know there's a, a lot of opinions about the old firehouse and what some of the uses might be for that, whether it's a cafe, restaurant, or uh, just a, a recreation center or gym was one uh, one point that was that was risen with us. Um, and, and finding ways to better connect the town center uh, to the surrounding neighborhoods, either with some sort of trail or sidewalk system. Uh, that's another thing that we would uh, we would take a look at and see if that would. Uh, sometime in the future. Um, you know, Town Center is sort of um, as the kind of historical part of the community uh, and with all the civic uses that we have here, um, it's really kind of how it is and, uh, you know, I wouldn't foresee any major uh, changes to the Town Center, um, but there might be small things that could be done that could sort of increase the level of activity here. And I don't know if anyone has any specific comments about the town center, about the firehouse, or, or any concerns about that that we haven't already been, uh, we haven't already been brought up or discussed. You should never mention the old firehouse. That's my pet <laughs> I don't understand why it's taking so long to get this thing done. Uh, we went around this issue a few years ago with the old firehouse when somebody wanted to put a cafe. It's illegal to put it there because of the way the zoning is. Um, I'm sure the town council had a long discussion in, uh, about that. You cannot put a cafe, you can't put a restaurant in there. So get that out of your mind. You can have a lounge, you can have a coffee machine, I guess, but um, I understood that you could not have any commercial um, uh, business in that in that firehouse. So I think we ought to clear it up clear once for all. All right, thank you. I just wanted to, this may be somewhat related to the town center, but in the last comment, maybe it's not. Um, I guess I'm a young, relatively young uh, family who moved in a year ago. Um, so I've been here you know, not as long as almost everyone here. Um, but I think when, if, if the goal 
one of the goals that we're talking about is trying to attract young families. It's more than just housing stock. Um, you know, I think when I, my wife and I really thought long and hard, we had to live in Hamden before that we were living in New Haven, and we thought really hard about where we wanted to raise a family. I think there's a, you know, we were one of the few people from our, from our group of friends to move here. We were really the only ones. And, um, you know, I think my personal observation is that there's a move towards young, of younger families towards cities. And I'm not suggesting that Woodbridge should ever be a city, but you know, I think that young people are attracted to vibrant communities and, um, it, it, you know, I guess the biggest, and I'm very happy in Woodbridge, but I guess the one um, one thing that I feel is that there is, there is it, I have been struggling to find a sense of community that I think can, you know, it, that happens organically in other places where there are businesses where people gather, restaurants and farmers markets. So I would just advocate any, you know, maybe it can be in the firehouse, but, um, and, and you know, the Amity area is not particularly pedestrian, pedestrian friendly, please now. If there's any way to kind of diversify the you know, commercial uh, stock in the town and have businesses and um, places of gathering for people, I think that that would be attractive to I just have a small idea. I was just in Shelton, and one thing that struck me about how nice that town was is they had really nice signage, which really clearly said town hall or library or first church. And I think it's hard for people who are new to this town to get oriented because there isn't really, and it was tastely done and not overdone. And I think that's the key point. It would have to be done really appropriately, but it might make people feel like the buildings that do exist are more accessible and that's just my guess. Thank you. Well, one last thing that I think uh, we should address about the town center. A number of years ago, uh, there was a proposal to have a privately funded dog park uh, next to the tennis courts. And um, I'm a veterinarian in town, and uh, it's, it's uh, something this town really lacks compared to a lot of our surrounding neighbors, Camden, and Milford, et cetera, Bethany. And uh, we were told we could not have it, even though it was privately funded. Uh, it would cost the town really nothing uh, because of liability issues by our board of select. And I think that should be totally reconsidered. Um, and it would provide a lot more energy and interest in our town center because um, I know as a veterinarian that there are lots and lots of households with uh, dogs. And, you know, right now, they're, if you take them to a town park, you're supposed to keep them on the leash and, uh, you know, a nice, enclosed, safe dog park would be a nice center for people to socialize, gather, and like I've been to the Hamden Dog Park, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful place. Uh, and it brings, you know, a lot of community togetherness. And that's something we really ought to push as a community uh, to have, and because so, so many of our families have dogs. Thank you. I agree with um, the doctor that the dog park would be a wonderful addition. I'm not sure why we would can't have one for other families can. Um, I think the same liability issues for all families. Um, I just want to clarify, I'm not clear um, when you say farmer's market, whether in Hamden, whether it would be up here or down in, um, in the business district. I think that um, if we have something that is to promote um, commercial ventures and promote traffic, we should try to have a daily business to the extent it's possible um, to encourage businesses. Um, so I think we have to differentiate those things. Um, I know that we discussed the economic development issue having um, 
having the possibility of farmers markets, but we've been uh, not able to find land that we could have. Enough. This is part of the issues we don't have town on property in our business district. It would mention to me that we may be able to borrow parking lots to do that. Um, again, it might be a liability issue that I'm not aware of. But please differentiate between the two in your report. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to quickly touch on sustainability because this is one of our uh, topics that we're going to be doing a more in-depth fact book. Um, we get a little bit later into uh, into July, um, so I just want to hit a couple of points on this. Uh, there are so many different ways that, that you promote sustainability in a town, both from uh, private sector actions and, and development patterns to actions taken by the town and how it, it uh, runs its operations. I think one of the things that the survey has shown us is that there's a there's a lot of awareness of sustainability issues, and it may be a matter of just uh, getting engagement and, and action and, and drawing folks into into, uh, into activities that support uh, sustainable practices in the town. Uh, looking at uh, low impact development uh, regulations and standards, uh, and uh, compact development forms, especially in the uh, business district, uh, putting that into zoning is, uh, is something I think we'd like to take a closer look at. Uh, as well as uh, you know, what roles renewable energy can have, both from the town standpoint and for uh, potentially for uh, individual businesses um, in the business district. Uh, there are a number of instances of uh, businesses elsewhere that have uh, significantly cut their um, electricity bills by having some sort of renewable energy system on their uh, on their property. It doesn't need to be a, a gigantic wind turbine, but it can be some other form. Of renewable energy. These are issues we're going to get into, I think, a little bit more. But we heard you know, loud and clear from uh, from various meetings and from our Saturday session that this is an important issue to town residents. Uh, if anyone has something specific to sustainability that they think we should start taking a look at uh, right now before we get into that fact book, uh, that would be great to hear. Uh, but that, again, that's something that we're going to be taking a, a much deeper look at as we get a little bit uh, further into the summer. I think you've, uh, you've done a very good job of identifying what we may have missed tonight. So um, I thank you for that. And uh, uh, these two sessions, both Saturday, last, uh, Saturday the 17th and tonight, have given us a lot of information um, in terms of what sort of goals and strategies make sense from uh, the town resident perspective. And as I mentioned at the, in the opening, that's a very important part of the POCD. Uh, in order for the POCD to be unique to the community, um, it needs to have this sort of feedback uh, brought into it and, and distilled and, and turned into uh, actionable steps. One, uh, one last thing I want to touch on since we're getting close to 9 o'clock now is uh, uh, some of our, our future uh, public sessions on the 7th of July. We have the TPC meeting and we're interested in open space, community facilities, and uh, hearing about the final survey results. We'll be presenting uh, that material at that point, so that's about uh, about six weeks away. Uh, and we are going to have an additional workshop at the end of the summer, uh, late August, possibly beginning of September, depending on uh, schedules. And uh, um, we just want to have a, a, a workshop once everyone's sort of back and kids are getting ready to go back to school. Um, and at that point, we'll be looking at presenting some more concrete recommendations and action, action steps, because at that point, we'll be through doing all the fact book research and analyzing the issues. Um, so that's really when uh, we're going to start putting together what we think the goals and objectives uh, that the town uh, wants and needs uh, should be going forward. And of course, we're going to need a lot of feedback from folks to make sure that we're on track with what, uh, with what we have uh, proposed. So those are really the, the next two big uh, public events. Um, Obviously, you, you are. Uh, we have the website up, uh, bluebridgeplan.com, and uh, all the notices of things that we're doing uh, are being uh, posted on the town website. Uh, so please check in and uh, and look at those for, for any additional information and, and news of what's going on. Uh, again, if you haven't taken the survey, please do. And uh, uh, I think that's probably uh, it for our, our future session information. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's been, uh, very educational. I'm glad I, being a being a planner, it's 
not uh, really professionally interesting to go to a meeting where everybody agrees on everything and says the same thing. And I, I enjoy hearing diverse opinions. So, um, you know, ultimately it's going to make the POCD a much better document having everyone uh, hash these issues, these issues out and, and have a frank discussion about it. So I want to thank you for doing that tonight. And I appreciate your time. I know it's hard to get